written. So interestingly, the top um, the the top response was reinforcing the organisation's purpose, which I guess is not surprising. And then we also had um, come up quite high is uh, customer demand and growth opportunities. So um, interesting, you know, that one. I think that we often hear about customer demand and expectations for. Um, sustainability and then you know I guess um, it's interesting to see whether that actually stacks up with um, you know people uh, voting with their feet. But I think ultimately you know if you're delivering on your purpose you're going to meet your shareholders expectations the community's expectations and really good governance is also also makes good business sense. Because so many stakeholders want so many different things particularly in that um, you know, in that ESG analyst community, you know, there's not one request, there's lots of them. Because if you try and be everything to everyone, you'll never be anything to anyone. And so that's why anchoring back into your purpose, anchoring back into what your key stakeholders are telling you and knowing what you're there for becomes really, really important. For many organisations, um, sustainability came about through PR. And so this might have been in response to specific advocacy or interest groups um, and also reporting necessities. And what we've seen is that things were often bolted on over time. And this sometimes resulted in sustainability roles in strange parts of the organisation um, with a lack of clear alignment, metrics and accountabilities for those roles. So the key question for organisations is how do we shift to be more intentional and strategic in the way that we design and deliver sustainability outcomes? That also recognising you need to be quite intentional about where you're going. It is getting more complex. How do we bring all of that together in a way that's going to get us where we need to be in the future? We also see investors and stakeholders increasingly paying very close attention to how organizations design their sustainability operating models to achieve optimal impact. It's not only about size or about remit or about capability of the sustainability function, but also the governance structures, the controls, the procedures, and the support that you have to achieve defined strategies. Some organizations might choose to really centralize a lot of that expertise with centrally led execution of initiatives, whereas others might focus on leveraging really local grassroots initiatives with a much smaller centralized governance and reporting layer. And again, it's no right and wrong, it's about choice. Uh, what is fit for purpose in your context? We undertake a materiality assessment every few years. We've only recently just completed ours. Um, and that was really cal um, calibrating what we think is important against what our stakeholders do. So that's our members, our policyholders, our employees, the external market, other companies that we partner with. And um, it was good to see that we're all on um, the same path or the same way of thinking there. But likewise, we have to make choices. But I think that just goes to the governance piece. So it's really around what are those material risks that are going to bring, um, you know, harm to the, the business, be it people, be it reputational, be it financial, but those things that, that really destabilise the business, they're the musts. And I think at a, at a group level, it's, you know, it's an obligation from that governance and oversight perspective to ensure that there is an oversight of how those risks are being controlled. And the other piece on that, that lens is an independent eye to say, uh, are they working as intended? And what are we learning from that? And, and what are the improvements that we can make? We want to be able to celebrate the great things that we're doing. But sometimes it's about being able to package that up in a way that's digestible for the market. Uh, and I think that's something that's dramatically changed over the last two to three years is, you know, what are that portion of stakeholders needing to see and hear and in what format? So I think in terms of 
careers, you know, I mean, a lot of companies now have chief sustainability officers. It's just becoming more and more important in business and in coming years, you know, it will hold the same um, position on the executive team as, you know, CROs, CFOs, in my view.